I'm trying to wake up. My brain is numb. I barely hear the beep, beep, beep of, of what is that noise? My hearing is muffled and muted like cotton balls stuck in my ears. I can't open my eyes, yet I see bright light through my eyelids. My mind races. I try to remember. I focus on the light. So bright, yet so far away. Am I knocking on heaven's door? My brain fog is starting to clear. That light is not the light, not the sunlight. I remember just a moment ago riding my motorcycle. Then, bam! The grill of an SUV, which in my warped sense of humor I thought was funny since it was a Dodge. <laughs> I guess I didn't dodge out of the way fast enough. I'm just slowly starting to regain focus, and the first thought is, why me? Why is this happening to me? I had just lost my job, going through a custody battle to see my son, and now I'm laying here trying to make sense of what is around me. I don't know how much time has passed and think this must be heaven because I don't feel any pain, but I'm so cold. I'm pretty sure I'm naked and my boys are hanging out there and where are my clothes? Am I even covered up? The events start to replay in my mind and all I can see is the SUV's grill coming right at me as I tried to slam on the brakes. In a split second thinking, is this how I die? Just riding to the movie theater. Then an entire range of conflicting emotions bombard me at the same time. Peace and fear, calmness and anger, denial and acceptance. Then thinking of my deceased grandparents who I miss and cherish, They'll be there on the other side of heaven's door, ready and waiting to embrace me, right? <laughs> oh, wait, my son Jace, he's just a toddler. I won't be here to see him grow up. Learn to walk. Take him to his first baseball game or just teach him how to drive. I'm laying in an uncomfortable hospital bed, medicated but now fully alert. I realize my moneymaker, my hand, is not just broken, but crushed and unusable in a cast running from fingertips to my elbow with little rods and screws hanging out. Again, my war humor <laughs> is this from the SUV's grill. And where's the rest of it? <laughs> you know, I'm happy my other hand was just only in a cast. <laughs> As a professional designer and artist, you know, my eyes and brain are pretty important. Uh, and beyond that, my hands are how I earn a living, you know, make my money to support myself and my family. I look at my heavily bandaged and casted legs. Will I, <laughs> will I even be able to walk, tie my own shoes, even go to the bathroom on my own? Why me? I saw my future fading fast. Do I even have a future? They tell me the damage to my right leg is more severe to my left. I'm missing a huge portion of skin that had been peeled away like the skin from an apple. They tell me I have to make the choice between the lesser of two evils. Either a skin graft, which may or may not work, or sit in a soaker tub for an hour every day until the skin heals. Uh, fun fact, <laughs> they don't sell skin in stores, 
So being told that uh, skin would be removed from my opposite butt cheek, all I hear in my head is the song Baby Got Back and how I won't have any if I make this my choice. <laughs> so I opt for the soaker tub, uh, only to discover that sitting for an hour every day until it heals feels like sitting in a tub of acid uh, sprinkled with broken glass. It burns so bad. Why me? My hope started to flicker on at one of my darkest and lowest moments. Now alone in my apartment, unable to work, and <laughs> frankly, feeling pretty crappy. <laughs> About six or seven months still in cast. Will I ever be able to pick up and hold my son Jace again? Be able to pretend to steal his nose between my two fingers and say, you know, got your nose, <laughs> like I'd done so many times before any of this. I see my grandfather's recliner I inherited years ago. Nothing special, uh, just a old leather recliner, cracked, worn. I swear I could, <laughs> I, I could still smell my grandfather's scent. Just <sighs> it, it brings back life lessons and words of encouragement he poured into me. And Brian, life is hard. And you're going to get some scrapes and bruises like when you fell off your bicycle learning how to ride. That first time, I helped you back up. Then you got yourself back up. You can accomplish anything with hard work. You'll face some scary times, but you have the toughness to endure. More than his words, it's what I learned in how he lived and moved through adversity. The hardship of growing up in the Great Depression showed his resiliency to keep moving through whatever setbacks or roadblocks. Serving in World War II, not knowing what obstacles lay ahead. Resiliency. I, I hear him say, you can handle this. All the family members you know and don't know are inside you. All that they've endured and overcome in their lives, you've got inside you. You can accomplish anything. You've inherited the grit. You hear me? You've inherited the grit to accomplish anything with hard work. In that moment, I was reminded of the resilience of my grandparents and all my ancestors must have acquired living throughout their lives. I realized, why not me? You know, resiliency doesn't always happen quickly or <laughs> come with theme music or big fanfare. For me, resiliency came in, in baby steps and many victories, just many victories. Being able to sleep through that first night without nightmares of the crash after eight months <laughs> was a mini victory. Being able to wiggle that first fingertip after 11 months, mini victory. Not only being able to move my big toe, but to wear sandals. After almost a year, mini victory. Being able to put my feet in real shoes and tie the laces. Oh. You know that feeling when your hand falls asleep, anybody? <laughs> and you get that prickly feeling? Feeling that prickly sensation in my legs after 14 months was a mini victory. 
The first time I was able to stand and, and shuffle along the wall to the bathroom without help felt like my birthday. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> then I thought, yes, I can do this. Why not me? I cherished the moment when I could move all my fingertips again. <laughs> like the feeling from my childhood when the training wheels came off my bicycle. You know, learning how to hold a fork, uh, brush my teeth, <laughs> shave my own head, <laughs> hold a pen. My money makers were back. And you know, ultimately, you know, learning to, to sketch again, being able to drive without help from friends named Uber, I felt, and I can see, my future getting brighter again. Why not me? Imagine running a marathon and not knowing where the finish line is. You don't know how long you will be running, You have to keep going until somebody tells you when to stop. Being able to keep running in the race until you finish, that is true resiliency. There's no going back to normal, you know, after, after this. You know, there's reminders of pain, both physical you know, and emotional, and there's reminders of perseverance. Throughout my journey, it's allowed me to be here today with, with you. The pain hasn't completely gone away. You know, I'm in pain right now. Just talking and reliving this with all of you. But the pain I feel now is a reminder of my past. And I have the resiliency to keep moving forward. Bad things happen to all of us, you know. Setbacks, losses, obstacles visit with each of us sooner or later. You know, as my grandfather told me, you know, life is hard. You can pick yourself back up even, at, even after having some scrapes and bruises. You know, what are we going to do about it? You know, whose recliner will you see? I see two options. Quit or discover the resiliency within you to keep forging ahead. You know, why not me? Why not you? Thank you. <laughs>